Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. All right, welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. So glad that you are here. Thank you very much for joining. My name is Scott McKenzie, and you know this podcast is going to be all about industrial education. We've got a number of topics to talk about. We've got a great interview with a gentleman with Festo Didactic. I got that right. Yeah, Festo Didactic. And we're talking about the education of young people in the world of Industry 4.0, which is, uh, we'll go into that uh, detail. So let's get going. We don't have any time to lose. Yeah. So here, here's my mind being blown. Okay, we're all about training. I know that uh, this platform, the Industrial Talk platform, is all about equipping you, the professionals, the companies, to succeed in the future, and it's all about education. I can't take that away. You're changing the world, and we're all about uh, uh, changing business and for the positive. But so I'm having this conversation with uh, Thomas, and what was interesting is that uh, we do a good job at training sort of the traditional stuff. But when it starts, when we start talking about the future, when we start talking about Industry 4.0, the impact it has on your business, your profession, everything associated with it, and the speed at which it is uh, evolving and growing, it blew my mind because Festo Didactic and Thomas uh, uh, Lichtenberger. I hope I got that right, is uh, committed to training and teaching the youth in Industry 4.0 and the, and the tools and the techniques and the, te- the technology necessary, hands-on stuff necessary uh, to, to succeed in this new Industry 4.0 uh, marketplace. So I'm all about the education. I'm all about helping uh, youth succeed. And you know what? At Festo Didactic, they give you that hands-on. And speaking of hands-on, They sent me, if you're out on the industrial cam and you're looking at me, sorry to hear that, but it is what it is. They sent me in the mail a Bionics for Education kit. And in it is just cool stuff to building uh, a fish, uh, uh, an elephant snout. Anyway, it's it's for kids, but it's, it's, uh, it's Bionics kit. For engaging learners and bio-inspired engineering. How about that one? Bio-inspired. Yeah, they just sent it to me in the mail. And if you were, like I said, if you're out in the industrial camp, you've got to see it. I'm going to be able to post uh, pictures of it. But Festo Didactic, very committed to uh, all of this stuff. But really, you know, Industry 4.0 and, and training the future because it's happening whether you like it or not. And if you're a company, it's coming down the turnpike. But before we really get going, I want to be able to point out also the um, a collaborative uh, relationship with uh, Infor Education Alliance Program. And once again, we're about education. And this is, a, this is an organization that is really committed to uh, educating young professionals in the world of technology and uh all of the stuff that's associated with being a success in the future. And that's in for Education Alliance. And what I'm going to do, and it's not just that. They also have um, other programs out there called Gen 1. So I'm going to have all of this stuff out there linked. But I'm telling you right now, if you have kids and they're looking for uh, a, a, a profession for the future, they're <laughs> Festo Didactic, in for Education Alliance program, uh, Gen 1, all of those things, spectacular. They are passionate about your success. And for me personally at Industrial Talk, very honored to be a part of this, this effort. You're going to hear a lot more about it because we're just starting to and move forward. And, and uh, But there's stuff to download. If you need information about it, doggone it, do it. Because it is real important. And like I said, if you have kids, if, if you're looking for a career change, boy, boom. Here it is, man. It's all out there. Industry 4 bottoms. Okay, so let's get going with the interview. This is with a gentleman, once again, CEO of Festo Didactic. Now, it's part of the Festo family out of Germany. And so uh, Festo Didactic is the training component. They provide hands-on training, as you can tell by the industrial cam. This is, this is cool stuff, man. I'm excited because I'm going to pull it together. I, I, I don't know. I go back and forth. And his name is Thomas. Lichtenberger. 
So uh, he is passionate, and what he's doing is changing lives. And he's catching them before they really, I mean, they're just, uh, they're just looking at the future and how do, you, how do you get those hands-on opportunities for Industry 4.0. So enjoy the conversation. Get out there to industrialtalk.com. Download the stuff. Find out more about Festo. And, and like I said, if you have kids, ah, get them engaged. It's all fantastic. So thank you very much. Enjoy the interview with Thomas. All right, welcome Thomas Lichtenberg. He's with Festo Didactic. And you know what we're going to be talking about? That's right. Industry 4.0, 4.0, for whatever O. Thomas, welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. Listeners, this is an important podcast for you to listen to. How are you doing, Thomas? I'm doing wonderful. It's an honor for me to be with you today. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, <laughs> the honor is all ours because... You've got some mad talents out there, and I've been out on your uh, LinkedIn page, your stat card, and uh, you got some street cred out there. Why don't you give everybody a little background on who you are, the 411 on uh, Thomas? Sure. So my name is Thomas Lichtenberger, and I'm the CEO of Festo Didactic for North America. And I spent most of my career in the automation world. And Festo Didactic is part of the Festo Group, where we are a global leader in automation with about 20,000 people. But we really believe in technical education so strongly that 50 years ago, the owners of Festo founded their own company, Festo Didactic. And in the meanwhile, we are the largest provider of technical learning solutions all over the, the world. Um, I'm just telling you. Okay, so you listeners out there, it's Festo. That's F-E-S-T-O. Next word is didactic. That's D-I-D-A-C-T-I-C. -I -C. And, and one of the things that is just near and dear to my heart, Thomas, is, of course, you are passionate about education. You are passionate about that, uh, deploying that education into the schools, into the, the, the youth around the country. And, um, and that's what Festo Didactic does. That's your focus. That's your purpose. And you focus in on how do you train, how do you teach in this industry 4.0 world. Is that correct? This is absolutely correct. There are so many changes going on in industry at the moment. When we talk about advanced manufacturing, this is so much different than what it was in the past. There are also so many misconceptions that manufacturing industry is oily, dirty, and it's not yeah. attractive to work in there. And I'm, I'm working hard on these misconceptions to talk to students, to talk to parents and teachers that this is absolutely not true anymore. We talk about a very attractive industry here. Advanced manufacturing is changing significantly. Industry 4.0 makes it so attractive and allows so many new opportunities as a career, but also as a, as a manufacturer to implement new business models and to be just so much more successful in the future. Okay, two questions. First off, you blew my mind because I, I, I've been in the world of, of automation and we've interviewed a number of individuals that are sort of wrapped around that whole effort. One of the things that was a true gap, and I didn't realize it until you reached out, was the fact that we're not educating. Are we truly educating in this new world of Industry 4.0? And, and we've, we've got so much because it's so fast. And then the second thing for the listeners out there, uh, Thomas, define what Industry 4.0 is. Okay, let me start with, uh, with the last question. What is Industry 4.0? And to really understand it, I think the easiest way is you actually go back to Industry 1.0. This was the, mechani the mechanical production, the steam engines. This was in the 18th century. The Industry 2.0 was the mass production, the industrialization, the beginning of the 20th century. And then in the early 1970s starting, we had PLCs, we had computers coming, we have had robots. This was really the electrical automation. And so that's 3.0, like industry 3.0. Exactly. This is 3.0. So this is the world we, we know. So we all know that there's a lot of robots in manufacturing sites. So, but what is now 4.0 and what is actually the difference? And it's pretty simple. The difference is connectivity, communication, bringing the internet into the world of production. 
so that now all of a sudden there, there are no stiff processes anymore where we have a, a, a stiff program telling the robot what he has to do and then move to the next step and so on. And now everything is connected in real time and even to the degree that uh, products who are being produced are telling the machine how they want to be produced. The machine tells the workers when the next uh, maintenance cycle has to be applied because all of a sudden there's uh, uh, some, something going on which is not usual or not typical, so they need some work. Or machine tells the other machine, oh, can you please take over because I'm too busy now. You know, this real-time communication, this is really what makes it different. And, and, and we're going to still get to the education aspect of it because that's real important. Yes. But this sort of dovetails with it. Each industry, let's say 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, all of those, and there's a certain time span between the first industry, the second, and and what I sense, and correct me if I'm wrong, Thomas, the compression of time in industry 4.0 is much tighter. It's faster. It's speed. Is that true? This is definitely true. And the industry for the industrial revolution 4.0 is actually the first revolution which announced itself before it happens. Huh. The other industry revolutions, the one, two, three, they were named to be a, re a revolution after the fact. But industry 4.0, it's everybody talks about it. It's a buzzword, certainly. However, this is so powerful that that it is also not something which is introduced everywhere at the moment. We have some leading companies who are really having uh, it in place in their factories all uh, everywhere. But most of the, especially small and mid-sized companies, are still at the beginning to introduce this. But there's one thing in common that everybody knows this is what will happen and this is what will come, and we have to be prepared for it. And that's, that's a real good point there, Thomas. And, and you listeners out there, first off, just recognize, Venus, this isn't going away. Either you begin to get into the game of Industry 4.0 and begin to understand the impacts it will have in your business, or your competition will, and you're, you're just going to go by the wayside, just FYI. Now, Thomas, the speed at which we're sort of transforming into this, this industry 4.0 is fast. What I can see the stress being is that, I mean, you need, you need people to understand this. Mm -hmm. it, it, you backfill, and, and, and it's just like anything else. And that's where uh, Festo Didactic uh, really shines, because you're training on this particular subject matter. Isn't that correct? This is absolutely correct. The, the speed and the pace of what's going on is enormous at the moment. And this puts a lot of stress on, on, on everybody, on the companies, the employees, the educational system to, uh, to deal with that. And it's also important to understand industry 4.0 is much more than just the technology. It's not that we have a few more widgets which now are able to, to, to connect to each other. It's much more than that. You know, when, when we look at the technology we have today, this might be different next year. We might have some other components, but being able to bring everything together, that everything can talk to each other in the same language, this is really something really special. Yeah, the 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 thing as a as a business owner, right? And as I say, okay, I got it, man. I hear what uh, Thomas is saying, and I, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. But I'll give you the example that you know I always have buyer's remorse. So I go out and I'm I'm I did my research and I go to I go to the store and I want to buy a TV and then I buy that TV and it's got this you know great bells and whistles and then the next week there's one that's better and cheaper and 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 I just it's it's like I can't me business owner wrap my arms around it because the speed of the technology the speed of the thinking surpasses me the business owner's capability to to consume I'm on four, I'm on version 1 and everybody in the world of 4.0 is like, whoa, we're at version 10. And I haven't even evaluated version one and I'm looking at two. You know? but, the, but the basic principles, they stay the same. And you should start better today than tomorrow. You know, to, 
to work with a PC will not change completely uh, when you when you have been there's a new model of a PC. But how to work with a PC and to understand it, you can start right today. And I think. Yeah. No, I agree with you 100% on that because you can sit there like me and, and, and I could drag my feet and yet the world is moving forward. 4.0 is moving forward and I could just sit there and drag my feet all day long and either I get in the game and make my mistakes or try to figure it out. And, you know, you just go through it. Get in the game. Absolutely. I mean, just get into it and, and you'll, you'll be a better. Now, let's talk a little bit about your training program, because I can see that at, in a company that desires to get into the 4.0, that being a pinch point. Mm -hmm. Meaning, I, I don't, I, I want to get into it. I'm trying to get into it, but I can't find anybody that does it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe four, I need 10, you know. Yeah. So what, what we do is we work very close together with uh, colleges, universities and high schools, but also with training centers of larger, larger companies who do their own education. And for us, one driving factor is really the, the hands on learning. So when we work, for example, with, with uh, two year colleges, we provide them with uh, real industrial products and learning solutions in a, in a very systematic and standardized way so that the students can train on real life equipment, equipment which is actually used in industry, but then having a curriculum building up so that they really can understand from the fundamentals, they still need to know how to use a hammer, a screwdriver, what a PLC is, an ACDC and stuff like that. And then moving up into the mechatronics area and then industry 4.0, where we talk about MES systems, connectivity, advanced robotics, how everything works together. So that we have really a, a complete holistic solution, starting with the fundamentals and leading and up to the top and having complete career paths. This is what we are focusing on so that we are not having only one specific technology we are teaching. We teach also more how to learn as well. And if you allow me to just one more sentence. Oh, I'll allow you two, maybe four <laughs> sentences, maybe. Oh, okay, thank but you. But I'll jump I'm, on in and I'll cut you. No, I won't. I, you're, no you're rocking and rolling, Thomas. I'm, I'm hanging on every doggone word because I think I, I love what you're talking about. Yeah. Continue. I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, into this technology. I love engineering. I love manufacturing industry. But I learned also at the end what makes a company brilliant are the people. The people, yeah. certainly on the management level, but especially the people on the factory floor who, are, who are, have to deal with all this situation. This makes, makes companies so successful. But we do, a, we do a, and, I, and I, I'll jump very quick, really. They're in the trenches, they see the pain, they feel the pain, they have solutions, and we, in general, have to bring them that thinking in. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, equally important than learning a technology, knowing what the communication language is or RFID tags or things like this, equally important are the soft skills. So uh, critical yeah. thinking, teamwork, you know, young people, they still need to be able to communicate, you know, design thinking, you know, those soft skills, they are important. And you mentioned a few times mm. the speed, the agility of industry 4.0. This will not change. This will even accelerate in the future. So, but you need to learn how to deal with this technology. And the core of this are these, these kind of so soft skills. And this is why we make this part of our program when we talk to high schools, universities, or colleges, or industrial companies as well. Yeah. And, and, and what, what, See, and I'm always thinking about the process. I'm going through my head and I'm thinking about the process. Mm -hmm. And when we start talking about, this is very tactile. You need to get your hands on this, these, these things, right? This whole industry 4.0. But Festo Didactic provides those tactile things to be able to train properly because if you don't have it, it's all fine and dandy to be able to chirp and talk about it. it you you got to touch that stuff and you've got to, connected and you got to see it. 
Absolutely. And this is Love one it. of our core beliefs that you need to have this hands-on training. And let me make one example. We, mm -hmm. One of our uh, big learning systems which we provide, we call it CP Factory, Cyber Physical Factory. And cyber and physical means the virtual world is connected to the real physical world. Mm -hmm. we have one system which basically mimics a production line with everything what is needed and what Industry 4.0 actually means. So a small factory, but for the classroom. We installed this with one of our uh, partner colleges, uh, uh, a community college in Owensboro. And I, I was talking to the instructor of this, and she worked in industry before. And she said, Thomas, that's amazing. What I see here is exactly what I know from industry. And it's, it's amazing that we can train on this kind of equipment and, and learn all the processes and learn how to deal with it. That, see, that's huge. And, 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 and you'll just come on in with the equipment. You'll say, okay, this is the equipment. We'll just bring it on in. We'll set it on up. Do you create all of the, the learning requirements associated, not just the equipment, but all of the other stuff that re revolves around, okay, now do this, do check this out, blah, blah, blah. Do you do that? Absolutely, absolutely. That's that's a key thing. We train the, inst the instructors. We have to train the trainer yeah. programs. We have the curriculum, the exercises, and actually, just recently, actually last year, we started developing a certification program, because I think one problem what we have in the United States is that you know we have many colleges who, for example, train mechatronics. So you get a degree in mechatronics. But what one student, what competence is one student from one college has might be a completely different skill yes. set from a, another college with the same title, right? So yes. this is one thing to create a kind of standard for industry that they know, okay, this person has the certificate, so I can believe in that he or she has this competence. And the other thing is that we really have to build up the competences. So to jump right to the top doesn't work. You have to oh. start with the fundamentals. You have to learn it, and then you have to move, can move up. Yeah, see, and, and when I was a, a, a lineman, I started out on the ground, and, mm -hmm. and I worked on the first step and the second step. And it was that nobody was going to uh, stick me up right on the tower, right off the bat and doing what I – it is a, uh, you know, a building process. And without that, you're, you're going to – you have to have that. Yeah. Now – now, this sounds great. You had me at, you know, didactic, whatever. You had me there. Now, what are the true challenges outside? I mean, here in the United States, the challenges, the things that, I mean, this sounds spectacular, but it, everybody should be jumping in on it because this train is coming down the track whether you like it or not. So anyway, talk to me. Yeah. So... There are, there are some challenges out there. At the moment, the manufacturing industry is actually in a terrific situation. As you know, we have a very, very low unemployment rate. And companies are yeah. struggling to find enough skilled workers. Yeah. And this is the same. It doesn't matter to what state I go. It's, it's really difficult. They're just not finding enough workers. So going now to the education system, we have to ensure that, that uh, uh, our college system or education system has enough students who want to go into this direction so that at the end, we are able to provide the skilled workers. So this comes to a point that we have to start and work early on high school, middle school level, or even in kindergarten, you know, expose the students to technologies, telling them how attractive it is to go into this direction. Well, you, you just, uh, you touched something that was really, when you said in the elementary school, I remember growing up and we would go to these and we would watch these films and some of these films were just about industry, right? Mm -hmm. I was in second grade and I'm watching it and I loved it, right? And, and I don't think we do that. And I think that that is a, I mean, clearly a necessity and it is a gap. And I, I, I just, and I, and I like your point, Thomas, Industry is changing. It is a very sophisticated, and it's going to get more sophisticated as, as time goes on. Mm -hmm. and, and people like you, your team, and others are really pushing the envelope to be creative, to be just changing. You're changing the world the way I look at it. 
yeah, it's it's we are in really interesting times at the moment, and I'm in in the automation business since more than twenty years now, and I've never seen so much change in such a short period of time. And I know you come from this area as well, and oh. I'm sure you can agree to it. You know, I one ex, one interesting example is when it comes to artificial intelligence yes. and stuff like that. What does it really mean? You know, I was talking to to a, a, a cheese making company. They thought, you know, what does artificial intelligence and, uh, can help me in production? When you then start thinking about what influences the productivity of a juice producing factory, yeah. you see it's the, uh, the quality of the milk and the, the amount of milk they get. So, but long story short, at the end, they measured the happiness of the cows, they measured the weather, you know, all the influencing factors yeah. to produce a good amount of milk. You know, this is artificial intelligence when you then uh, also uh, connect it, this, all this big data, um, yes. analyze big data to your factory floor. Yeah. And that's also industry 4.0. Yeah. See, and it's, it's fascinating. I had a conversation with the gentleman talking a little about spy, uh, supply chain, mm -hmm. supply chain optimization, the changes that are taking place. And he mentioned the point of like, hey, I want some uh, chips, but I want half the bag uh, uh, barbecue and the other half uh, ranch. And you could, you could get that because of the ability to be able to real time change that line, that supply chain, boom, you get it. And it's just... I, I don't know where it's going. I but just this, know I'm enjoying this ride. You know, typically, I was uh, I'm asked I asked the question. So why are we actually doing it? What is the actual benefit for industrial company doing industry 4.0? Why should I do it? And when you think about it, it really starts with us as a consumer. Like you just explained, we want to have a high customization. We want to have it delivered better today than tomorrow. So this puts a lot of demand and requests on uh, on a production. Yeah. company so when in the past when you build a production line you had to decide uh, do i build it as a mass production uh, so that i can produce it very cheap in high quantities or do i do a very customized uh, one piece flow production so you yeah. you had to choose with industry 4.0 you can have both in one you can yeah. You have a highly flexible production line and keep the cost yeah. still low that's yeah. why industry is doing it it's so like I can I can have my own customized sneakers. Yes, exactly. And and and, and, and that it's I, gone are the days that uh, it's just one type of sneakers, whether you like it or not. Go out and buy it, and you know, and enjoy it. But now you, I mean, it's I I, I completely love it. You listeners out there, we're going to have to wrap this up here, Thomas. I would love to. I would talk for hours on this. I would, Me but too. I don't think we have time for that. But nonetheless, okay, you listeners out there, let's uh, let's do a little recap. One. This is Industry 4.0. We talked about Industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and I just want to make sure you understand, dive into Industry 4.0, figure it out. If you're in a company, look at it, start to think about it, and I guarantee you, you need individuals that are truly trained in Industry 4.0, and we need to be able to do that. In fact, not just today, yesterday, because this is going to uh, it's, it is. It's changing our lives and it's changing the way we do business, whether we like it or not. And get engaged today. As Thomas was saying, just, just, just do it now. Just, just do it. And I guarantee you, Thomas, you're pretty active on uh, LinkedIn. Yes, I am. Okay. So here's the deal, listeners out there. He's active on LinkedIn. You can find him. You know you can find all the information on industrialtalk.com because I'm going to have all his contact information. And I want you to reach out to him some way, shape, or form because you need to get engaged in this industry 4.0 and he's got some great training and I mean, geez, Thomas, you're a wealth of knowledge. You've got some major street cred. I love it. Oh, 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 oh. And we were talking before we even started this podcast, we're going to be talking about bionics. That's right. Bionics. That's still bionics and how that's going to be. Bionics. I mean, an old guy like me, I, I was a big Steve Austin fan, and now we're talking about bionics? Jeez, my head is bl blowing up. Thomas, thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk podcast. You were spectacular. Get a hold of this guy because, well, he knows what he's talking about. Thomas, thank you. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank pleasure. you very much. And, and you, Industrial Talk listeners, we are going to be right back. We're going to, I'm just going to make, I'm going to lay all of this out. 
You need to be back. And we're going to lay it all out because you need to get a hold of Thomas and his team. So stay tuned. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. As an industrial professional myself, I was always passionate about sales, marketing, branding, expanding the marketplace for my company. That's what the Industrial Talk platform is all about. It's about you, the industrial company, the industrial professional, and your legacy. Increasing sales, gaining greater exposure on what you do and how you and your company changes the world. Go out to industrialtalk.com. That's industrialtalk.com. Contact me. Let's have a conversation to see how we can work with you on improving your bottom line and that you can be a part of an ever-growing network of industrial companies focused on expanding and growing and leaving a legacy. I hope to hear from you soon and be safe out there. All right, let's wrap this podcast up. That's Thomas Lichtenberger, Festo Didactic. He's passionate about the future, the success, teaching, training, hands-on with Industry 4.0. Uh, you go out to their website. You'll have everything out on industrialtalk.com, industrialtalk.com, all the links that you need. If you have kids, pick up one of these bad boys, man. I'm telling you right now, I'm pretty excited about the opportunity to put that together as well as Look out at N4 Education Alliance program. It's all laid out there as well as Gen 1. Gen 1 is about the future and providing educational opportunities as well. But once again, we're at the beginning of it and we're going to continue to sort of grow. And I'm just so honored with Industrial Talk to be able to be associated with uh, N4 and their education efforts for the youth and teaching all the great technology. I'm going to be hashtagging, yes, we code. Hashtag, yes, we code. So it's exciting. And always, as always, go to industrialtalk.com. Look for the Industrial Academy. That is all, you know, programs that are associated with business development, industrial, industrial, business development, sales, marketing strategies that you can deploy today and uh, be a success tomorrow. It's all about expanding that business. So thank you very much, as well as uh, being a part of the Industrial Talk podcast. Stay safe. We'll talk again.